Today we're gonna talk about the famous UNET, which is a fully convolutional neural network used for image segmentation. We will talk about what UNET is, how it works and how to use it and whether it's still relevant today. We've got quite something to cover today, so let's get into it. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe. And I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years. And before we start, I would like to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel so far. You are the best. And to everyone else, don't you also want to be the best? So what are you waiting for? Go and hit that subscribe button. Let's start by talking about what UNET actually is. UNET is an architecture for a fully convolutional neural network that specializes in image segmentation, also called semantic segmentation. Image segmentation or semantic segmentation is a procedure where you not only predict whether something specific is on a picture, like a dog or a cat, but it is also able to create a mask that shows where on the image that specific object is located and its dimensions. You can think of semantic segmentation as a variation of classification, where basically every pixel in an image gets assigned a class that it belongs to, which then kind of forms the mask. UNET is fully convolutional since it contains only convolutional layers and does not contain any dense layers or also called fully connected layers. It was initially developed in Germany by researchers at the University of Freiburg for medical image segmentation. UNET was initially developed as a single class segmentation model, but it can also be used for multi-class segmentation. Most implementations you'll find online support multi-class segmentations out of the box. That sounds all very nice, but how does it work, you ask? So, well, I've got my trusty uh, iPad here, and yeah, let's do some explaining. Let's have a look at a picture of the UNET architecture, and I hope you now understand why it's called UNET. The UNET architecture basically consists of two parts, the encoder and the decoder part. Let's start with the encoder part. The encoder tries to understand the what of the image. It does it by using convolutions and max pooling, as it is quite usual in convolutional neural networks. You can think of the architecture in terms of levels. So those are the levels that I'm talking about. Every level consists of two 3x3 three three convolutional layers, each followed by a ReLU activation unit. The transition between those levels is handled by a 2x2 two two max pooling unit with a stride of 2 for downsampling to basically reduce the size of the input to the next level. This is basically the encoding, condensing the information with each layer and widening the receptive field. With every level that we go to the bottom of the U-shape, the size of the input halves, but the number of channels doubles. That way, the network is able to learn more complex relationships in the image data. By the time we reach the bottom of the U-shape, the model knows the what of the image fairly well. So far, this is basically what almost every convolutional neural network is doing. For classification, you would at this point maybe add some dense layers and predict the output class. But for the use case of semantic segmentation, this is not good enough. The what is not enough. We also need to know where on the initial image the objects are located and what their area is. So the next thing that we need to talk about is the decoder part. But before we do that, it would be really awesome if you could go completely insane and nuts on the subscribe button and all the notification icons that you can find. That would really help me out and thank you very much. The decoder is basically responsible for the where part of the model. It uses basically the same architecture for each level, but with a slight variation. For localization, to be more precise, so-called skip connections are used where the feature maps of the encoder are concatenated to the output of the transposed convolutions of the same level. The idea behind this is that since we already learned the feature mappings during the encoding process, why not use them as well to provide more information while decoding? Also, since it is our goal to get an output that is similar in size to the input, we need to upsample the condensed information at the bottom of our unit shape back to the original size. So instead of max pooling in between the levels, we this time use 2x2 two two transposed convolutions, also known as deconvolutions, to upsample the condensed representation uh, of the image that we now have at the bottom of our unit shape back to the size of the original input image. As you might have seen in the original paper, the output is much smaller 
than the initial input though. In the paper, the authors used unpadded convolutions and because of this, the output is smaller than the input. But it might be a good idea to use padding to keep the original image size. Most implementations that you will find online will have parameters for whether you want to have padding or not. For training the unit, the cross entropy loss function is used and as an activation function of the final convolutional layer, the paper uses softmax. What also needs to be mentioned is that in the decoder part, the procedure of the encoder is basically reversed. So where in the encoder, the image gets smaller and smaller, but the number of channels gets bigger and bigger, in the decoder part, it's the opposite. So we upsample the data, which means that the image or like the data gets bigger and bigger, but with each level, the number of channels halves. So, but now you might ask, well, this is all nice, but how to actually use it? So uh, for me, it is important to also show how to actually use the machine learning models that I show you. So what would be the training data, the inputs and outputs for this case? Since we are familiar with the concept of inputs and target variables in machine learning, we need to provide those to our model so that it can learn where the objects are located in the inputs that we present to the model. The inputs is easy. That is the image that we want to have segmented. Is segmented a word? It is a good idea to pick images for training that resemble the ones that we use later in the real application, um, if possible, of course. Determining the target variable can sometimes be more difficult. In the case of single class segmentation, we usually need to provide an image of a black and white segmentation mask to mark the area of the objects in the original image. As the target in case of multi-class segmentation, we usually need to use different colors to mask the different objects. But since machine learning models need numbers to do their fancy calculations, you of course also need to load and convert the image to a 3D volume, or for better understanding, you can also say multi-dimensional array. But have no fear, TensorFlow provides all the models that you need for that. UNET was first introduced in uh, 2015, and when it was used in competitions, it um, basically outperformed the other models by quite some margin. But since then, quite some time has passed and the question arises, is UNET still relevant today? There are many, by far more complex state-of-the-art architectures around that might have better accuracy in segmentation. But UNET is still quite popular. The nice thing about UNET is that it can get quite good results even with a limited set of training data, since it was developed with medical images in mind and uh, yeah, labeled training data is very rare in those uh, use cases. So that's it for this video. I hope it was informative in any way. If so, going completely nuts and insane on the subscribe button and all the notification icons that you can find would be really appreciated. Thanks for hanging out with me and see you in the next video.